Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Today, I'm finally getting around to comparing AMD's FSR upscaling to NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling at 1080p, a follow-up to our DLSS versus native comparison from a few weeks back. 1080p is still a relevant and popular resolution in 2024, so comparing the two major GPU brands and their upscaling solutions at 1080p is pretty important for a lot of graphics card owners and buyers. But before we get into it, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly and their CryoSheet Graphene Thermal Pads, which are an excellent alternative to thermal pastes. They offer very high thermal conductivity with no liquid components, so they can't dry out and therefore don't degrade over time like pastes and even liquid metals. CryoSheet is very easy to use, it's extremely durable, and is available in a range of sizes to suit most applications. I've personally done some high-end GPU testing with CryoSheet, and the results were impressive, very similar in fact to that of liquid metal, but without the mess, and of course, no risk of drying out. So for more information, please check the link in the video description. As I mentioned in the previous video, the issue with testing upscaling technologies is that the results seen at higher resolutions don't apply to lower resolutions. If I compare DLSS and FSR at 4K and find the results anywhere from pretty similar to a bit favorable towards DLSS, those conclusions may not be accurate for gaming at 1080p. The reason being, the output resolution is lower, so the render resolution is lower, leading to fewer samples being input into the upscaling algorithm. I've got a 10 game comparison for you today looking at DLSS versus FSR versus native resolution rendering using TAA with a focus on the quality modes for both DLSS and FSR. I'd strongly recommend watching this video using YouTube's 4K setting to get the highest bitrate. Also, if you want to take a closer look at any of the comparisons throughout the video, on a phone you can pinch to zoom on the video so you can see fine details more clearly. On a desktop PC you can pause the video and use the comma and period keys on your keyboard to step through frame by frame. First up is Cyberpunk 2077 which uses DLSS 3.5.10 and FSR 2.1. What was interesting to observe here is that FSR does a better job than DLSS at preserving ground textures. While still not nearly as clear as the native TAA image at 1080p, FSR has that bit more detail in the texture work and isn't quite as blurry. However, in general, the DLSS image is clearly superior. FSR has major issues with ghosting in this scene, especially around the left corner of the car and the pipes around the license plate. DLSS has issues with ghosting as well, relative to native, but the level of FSR ghosting is more noticeable and more severe. FSR has stability issues as well. The pink sign on the right of the scene flickers a lot in motion, where the native and DLSS images don't, and the same can be said for some of the utility pole elements on the left. Small fine details, especially those further from the camera, throw up significant problems for FSR, and this makes the game a lot more ugly than you get with either the DLSS quality mode or native rendering. In this next scene, one of the major differences between DLSS and native rendering was the stability of different elements. The native image struggled with the green transparent element, while DLSS struggled with the grating under the billboard. Unfortunately, FSR struggles with both, so we get the worst of both worlds. Now, stability in motion here is not great. DLSS has a lot of issues with overhead wires and ghosting around the streetlights, but to me, the flickering and instability in the FSR image is more noticeable and affects more parts of the presentation. Next up is Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart, which uses DLSS 3.5.0 and FSR 2.2. This is not a good showing for FSR at all, especially at 1080p where the game looks awful even with FSR quality enabled. There are many immediately obvious issues with FSR compared to DLSS, such as disocclusion artifacts around Ratchet as he moves, sizzling in the grass, and other fine detailed elements, flickering around the confetti on the ground, poor stability for distant fine details, and terrible handling of transparent objects. I think this title is one example where you can clearly notice the reduction in rendering resolution when using FSR. There are many areas to the presentation that just look pixelated, grainy, or reduced in detail in some way, which is typically what you get when rendering the game at a sub-native resolution. Whatever is being fed into the FSR algorithm just isn't sufficient for how it reconstructs the image at 1080p, and the output is substantially worse than DLSS. At times, it can be a little difficult to spot exactly what is going on in motion, and the game can just 
feel like the quality is reduced when using FSR, but I think when you pause the footage and look around, you can see why this is the case. There are many instances where the quality of a given frame is low. I mean, look at the rain in this frame, or Ratchet's fur in this next frame. When you're seeing this level of artifacting in the majority of frames presented, it's noticeable and completely unacceptable for a modern upscaling technology. Dead Space is next up, and I think FSR 2.1 does a reasonable job in this game relative to DLSS 2.5.0. It's certainly not a Ratchet and Clank situation. Now when using the quality modes for both, the FSR image is a bit less stable, noticeable along the edges of geometry and textures at times, but the FSR image also has less ghosting than the DLSS image. In particular, I think FSR is a bit more adept at handling the darker parts of the scene, which is generally where DLSS ghosting is more noticeable, but in other areas I think DLSS has a bit of an edge with fine detail reconstruction, and the text on signs above doors is more readable at a further distance compared to FSR. In Spider-Man Miles Morales, FSR 2.1 is only a mild to moderate downgrade in visual quality from DLSS 3.5.0. We see some pretty typical issues with the presentation, such as disocclusion artifacts around miles, and poor stability for fine details like foliage, grates, and meshes. Some areas to the image are also worse than native with the DLSS presentation, but typically if there's an artifact noticeable with DLSS, such as an unstable grate or tree, it'll be even less stable on the FSR side. It's not a Ratchet & Clank situation where the entire game looks like it's running at a much lower resolution when using FSR, it's more specific areas that might have reduced visual quality. I'd still prefer to use DLSS over FSR here though, and I don't think this is a game where some areas look better with FSR than DLSS like we saw in Dead Space with Ghosting. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 is a fast-paced shooter, and in my DLSS vs Native video I said that while DLSS did have worse image quality compared to Native, generally the speed of the game makes these artifacts hard to spot. I think in some aspects you could say the same about FSR, but in general playing the game, I found the issues with FSR more obvious, and I think it has the feel of playing at a lower render resolution. Most of the issues with FSR in this title relate to grain, stability, and pixelation. In motion, there just isn't enough data that stays similar between frames, so whenever an element is moving fast across the screen, FSR simply renders that element with less detail. Your gun, for example, ends up looking a bit grainy at times, as does any foliage, which DLSS handles much better and gets closer to the native image. DLSS does have trouble with the edges of objects and often produces jaggies or low levels of detail, but the same could be said of FSR. Towards the end of the benchmark run, we get a good look at Y detail as well, and there's really no getting around that the FSR presentation is less stable than DLSS, which is a common theme we've seen across the games tested so far. Despite being an AMD-sponsored title, Star Wars Jedi Survivor is a horrible example for FSR at 1080p. In general, I think this game looks pretty bad at 1080p. No matter what technique you use to render the game, there is a blurriness to the output and plenty of temporal artifacts, but especially when viewing the FSR output, there is an unacceptable amount of issues. For example, when swinging your lightsaber around, the disocclusion artifacts with FSR are more noticeable than with DLSS, although they are present for both. But I think the biggest thing for me is just how blurry and garbled the character you are controlling gets during any of these actions. It just looks really bad and low quality, and this is combined with plenty of stability issues throughout the game world. DLSS 3.1.2 in Hogwarts Legacy does a decent job at 1080p, and I found it to look slightly better than the native TAA presentation previously. FSR 2.2, on the other hand, is not up to scratch. Hair quality is noticeably grainy and sizzles in motion relative to DLSS and native, plus there are more disocclusion artifacts around your character. This is pretty common for FSR in third-person games. These artifacts have improved over time at higher resolutions, comparing FSR 2.0 and 2.2, but at 1080p it still seems to be an area that's quite problematic for image quality. The issues with rendering complex detail like hair also seems to play a part in poor foliage rendering, which is especially noticeable compared to DLSS. I wouldn't say foliage looks great in this game at 1080p, in general it's pretty blurry across the techniques, but FSR is less stable and has the appearance of being rendered at a lower resolution. When large areas of the scene can be filled with trees and bushes, these types of artifacts can be especially noticeable, and that's definitely the case playing Hogwarts Legacy in the more open areas of the game. Starfield was recently updated to include FSR 3.0, but that's done little to close the gap to DLSS 3.5.0 in terms of image quality. 
In the original release of the game, I pointed out quite a few stability issues with FSR at lower resolutions like 1080p, which was bad given that some of the quality presets automatically enabled upscaling with quite a low render scale like 50% at 1080p, which is disgustingly low. The upscaling component of FSR 3.0 is fundamentally the same as 2.2, which means in Starfield we get the usual FSR issues. Fine details tend to flicker and shimmer in motion or even when stationary, especially compared to the more stable DLSS presentation. Native TAA does the best with things like meshes and fine wires, and FSR does the worst. How problematic this will be depends on the scene. There are some areas like this one where I was pretty disappointed in both DLSS and FSR with lots of noticeable artifact issues using the quality mode at 1080p. The Talos Principle 2 is a very bad showing for FSR at 1080p using the quality mode. In motion, the image is very grainy and has poor stability, especially for textures, foliage, and fine details. This is a game that has a generally decent level of detail, and when you compare FSR to DLSS, it simply falls well short of an acceptable level and is poor compared to native rendering. In this scene, as we walk forward, FSR produces significantly more shimmering in the textures on the right-hand wall, the foliage in front of the pyramid, the ground, and the gate in the distance. This is really obvious playing the game, and like with Ratchet & Clank, it's clear when using FSR that the game is being rendered at a lower resolution. DLSS is relatively okay here, and certainly gets much closer to the native image in terms of overall quality. Last game we have here is Assassin's Creed Mirage, which uses the outdated DLSS 2.3.1, as well as FSR 2.1. It's a pretty common theme here, the differences we've seen between native, DLSS and FSR in other games also applies to Mirage. FSR has worse image stability and more shimmering, affecting most aspects with fine details in motion like wires, grates, fences, foliage and hair. This isn't as bad of a game for FSR as The Talos Principle 2 or Ratchet & Clank, though part of this is likely due to the blurrier overall presentation at 1080p across the techniques, but even when walking around it's clear that the DLSS image is more stable than FSR, which ultimately is the most noticeable difference in terms of artifacts between the presentations. When it comes to performance, I've benchmarked all of native DLSS and FSR using an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 12GB as it's a suitable entry-level graphics card that can run all three technologies. I paired it with a Ryzen 7 7800X 3D to prevent CPU limits, as well as 32GB of DDR5 6000 memory. All games have been tested using ultra or maximum settings, typically with ray tracing disabled, though I left RT on for Dead Space and Miles Morales. There really isn't all that much interesting to say about performance, at least coming off the first part of this video series. The DLSS quality mode and the FSR quality mode offer roughly the same level of performance. Typically, DLSS ends up rendering a few frames faster, but the difference percentage-wise was less than 5%, which we deem to be a tie. This means that whether we run DLSS or FSR, the resulting performance improvement over native rendering is similar. We get around 35% more performance at 1080p on average across the 10 titles tested using the quality mode, though the gain does vary depending on the title. For example, upscaling is generally more effective in Dead Space and Star Wars Jedi Survivor, but less effective in Starfield and Assassin's Creed Mirage. But it's important to do this benchmarking because it tells us whether DLSS is running a more taxing algorithm to achieve its higher levels of image quality. On GeForce hardware, that doesn't appear to be the case, and when we've assessed it previously, Radeon graphics cards typically receive a similar performance uplift from FSR relative to GeForce at the same base frame rate. It's simply a matter of DLSS using hardware AI acceleration on the tensor cores to run its reconstruction algorithm, whereas FSR relies entirely on shader processing. Having now spent quite a lot of time testing various upscaling techniques at 1080p on a native 1080p monitor, I think the conclusions that can be drawn here are much more straightforward than at higher resolutions. Native rendering is king, delivering the best image quality most of the time. DLSS is in second place, typically reducing image quality, though in some circumstances this can be worth it for the performance improvement. And in a distant third place is AMD's FSR upscaling technology. The simple reality of the matter is that FSR it's bad at 1080p, even using the quality preset, typically the highest upscaled setting on offer in games. In most of the games tested, FSR doesn't really get close to native rendering, though results do vary as we've seen in the past. Some games are better examples for FSR with less noticeable artifacts, other titles have horrific image quality that makes it clear the game is running at a lower render resolution.
the overwhelming majority of issues associated with FSR are from poor image stability. Shimmering, flickering, sizzling, graininess, jaggies, disocclusion artifacts, and poor fine detail reconstruction are all typical issues with FSR in games at 1080p, and this can be problematic both in motion and in static scenes. There is also some level of detail loss, like with DLSS, generally creating a blurrier image than native rendering, but this is far less annoying while gaming than the constantly unstable presentation. It's pretty much no contest at 1080p in the battle between DLSS and FSR. Nvidia's upscaling technique wipes the floor with FSR. While it's a toss-up whether I'd consider using DLSS at such a low resolution, I would typically choose to avoid using FSR at 1080p because the image quality it produces is bad and detracts from the gaming experience. This is a very different conclusion compared to testing DLSS and FSR at higher resolutions. Back when I compared the two across 26 games last year, I found that FSR at 4K using the quality mode was similar or only slightly worse than DLSS in 17 of 26 titles. That number dropped to just 8 titles at 1440p using the quality mode with no ties. At 1080p, that number would probably drop to just one or maybe two games best case scenario out of the 10 tested, again with no real effective ties. As 1080p is still quite a popular resolution, especially among mainstream and entry-level gamers, I'd say this is a pretty big problem for AMD. A lot of the best Radeon products are in these price segments, like the RX 6600, which continues to be one of the best value GPUs on the market. AMD is the most competitive in the lower segments where cards are more suited to 1080p and 1440p gaming, yet it's here where FSR is even less favourable relative to DLSS and in many instances just isn't worth using. Simply put, AMD needs to improve FSR upscaling at lower render and output resolutions. It's very disappointing to me that FSR hasn't received any significant improvements to the upscaling component since FSR 2.2 was released back in November of 2022. That's 16 months with zero upgrades, the only change being the addition of frame generation in FSR 3. When your technology is lagging behind your competitors to this degree, that's extremely poor. There have been rumours recently that AMD are working on an AI-assisted upscaling technology, though it's unclear when it's arriving or if it's even destined for PC GPUs rather than game consoles. If this is true, AMD needs to get it out the door as soon as possible so game developers can begin integrating it into their titles and engines because we know how long that takes. But it feels like we've been saying that a lot about AMD GPUs features lately, so let's hope it doesn't launch late and half-baked. Anyway, that's it for this look at DLSS versus FSR versus native rendering, well, native using TAA, at 1080p across a range of games. If you do appreciate this sort of testing, then please consider subscribing, like the video, and we've also got our Patreon Float Plan accounts, links are in the description below. If you sign up, you'll gain some exclusive access to things like our Discord community, we've got monthly live streams, BTS content, plenty of good stuff in there. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.